Hello everyone, this is Scott with Black Mountain Maple. Today I'll be taking this priceless piece of black walnut and turning it into this gorgeous mantle here using a little bit of epoxy. I've had this piece of walnut for probably close to two years now and uh, actually got it on trade from my uncle who were making him a mallet. Uh, this tree was originally planted by a relative of mine on the, I'll say the family farm where my mother grew up and was cut down about 30-ish years ago and I've had it, like I said, about two years now so it should be quite dry. It wasn't put through a kiln or anything but air drying for 30 years should, should do something. This is all that's left of the tree here now, but you can see as it's cleaning up through the planer, it's got some pretty interesting character, but uh, from the first pass on the joiner, you can really see how not unflat it actually is. So it's going to take a bit of work to get it to, into a usable state. As you can see, it's getting pretty close here now, but I'm going to be scribing the back of the mantle by the time it's done anyway, so it doesn't need to be perfect, just needs to be good enough to, to get a bit of a reference, make it a little easier to work with. So then we're going to move on into cleaning up this live edge, which, as everyone knows, and you watch on YouTube, it'll all come off in one nice big piece, which also I learned very quickly that that is not the norm. This takes a long time. It is not the most pleasant thing in the world to do. You use all kinds of different tools, chisels, hammers. I was trying a couple of sanders and the wire wheel. I have two different um, stiffnesses of the wire wheel, or aggressivenesses, if that's a word and uh, found really the best thing to use was this chisel and mallet and just take the time and then clean it up with a, a brass wheel afterwards or nylon wheel but either way it uh, was not the most pleasant thing to be doing you can see with this just how little the pieces came off and how much work it actually was and as it was going kind of found this bit of character this crack here on the the front face, or what will be the front face of the mantle. Really the easiest way to clean that up was with that wire wheel and this little awl as well to really get down in there. So here's just more of the, the fine detailed cleanup, using again that all wire wheel, chisels, whatever I can use just to get the, the loose pieces out of inside the little cracks and holes. But uh, we're finally finished after all that, you can see quite a mess in the shop here now, which I obviously did not clean up as I moved on to a bit of 5 minute epoxy here just feeding it down inside this crack to make sure it gets sealed up because I couldn't come up with any other way to prevent the epoxy from, from pouring out there as I was filling from the top. A little bit of multitasking. Now that I got it all cleaned up, I just have to decide to move on and get started with the epoxy. It was a little intimidating for me because it would be my first real project with epoxy. So one of those things that once you start pouring it, there's not really a whole lot going back. And as I said to me, this piece of wood really is priceless. As I'm not going to have any other opportunity to use a piece that actually has a bit of a history with the family and put it in my own home. So I'd like it to go well. So here I got the, the first dose of epoxy in there. Just using actually a, a liquid dye. It's black. I actually bought it when I was uh, refurbishing a guitar. So I'm not sure if it's really something that you would normally use with an epoxy or not, but it uh, definitely worked really well. It gave a very jet black look, look to the epoxy. You can see this. This epoxy is fairly thick, so I did it in a couple, I'll say pours, but it's really not that much at a time, just in those little red cups. And cleaned it all up with the belt sander. And then was, as the paper was gumming up, the epoxy was trying to come up with some way of cleaning it off, where I don't have any of the little erasers or anything like that, and noticed that the drill still had the wire wheel on, and it worked fantastic. So I do recommend that as a little tip if you're doing some of this and you don't have the proper tools around, just try something. And I was a little concerned that about just using this red tape here for sealing up for the epoxy, but it did work quite well. And you can see after sanding it down, the epoxy drank a little bit, so I needed to just top it up a little more, so I did scuff it up. And 
There's that black die that I talked about. I should mention, I did actually seal the whole top of this lab. I actually used a, a polyurethane for the top first, just to make sure that none of that dye would soak into the wood. Wouldn't want it to stain it or anything, so. And then there's many, many hours of sanding. Popping the grain really gives the, the first look at how this is going to look in the end. And I guess I was pretty excited at this point. I didn't expect the the walnut itself to have that much color and, and character to it. But another little tip from Cam, actually, watching his videos, things that he says too, if you want to want your projects to really stand out, just make sure to make them as good as you possibly can. And part of that for me was getting rid of any of these little, as he calls them, micro bubbles, and just paying attention to all the very, very minute details and the little things, just really to make it as good as possible. And it really pays off in the end when you get the finish on. But this here is just uh, CA glue and activator, just to fill those little holes. I find it's a lot easier to carve out those small ones just to be a little bit bigger so the, the CA glue will actually get in there. And then back to sanding again. Now to finally see how the underside's looking, you can peel this tape off, which, I mean, started to go a little or pretty well, and then I kind of gave up and just sanded the rest of it off. But it actually turned out really well on the bottom. I didn't expect it to turn out this well. I expected a lot more clean-up and touch-ups with the CA glue and epoxy. And then here, this is just cutting my scribe line. I set the mantle in place and just scribed on the wall because I knew from previous experience that it was not, not nearly as straight as it could have been. But another tip that I will say is make sure your bandsaw is far enough from the wall you can actually complete the cut. And see here I had to move back out another foot or so, just to be able to finish the last couple inches of the scribe. I haven't seen too if you've stuck around this long, I hope that I've... Uh, earned your subscription or like and comments on different things that uh, you think could have gone better or I could have done differently to make things go better. I greatly appreciate it. I do read all of them. Now here we're applying the finish, which again, as everyone else does with these on YouTube, we decided to go with Rubio Monaco, which this is my first time working with, so I was really excited to see how it would go and honestly love how it turned out and how it applied. It is quite expensive, but I will say I do think it was worth it with how the finished product ended up. It really makes the grain of the walnut pop and that black epoxy look good, too. It brings out all the natural colors of the wood while still feeling and looking like wood. marking out for the, the actual mounting brackets. It's going to be a bit of a floating look. I just got these off Amazon. They're about the cheapest ones I could find that allowed me to separate out where the brackets actually were so I could line them up with studs on the fireplace instead of just ones that had all of the brackets mounted on one sheet. I'm not explaining that very well. But that's fine. You don't need to know. Just routed it out and now put it in place. This is the first look at it, actually mounted to the wall. You can see the wall still needs a few touch-ups. And how that scribe turned out fits really well. So I'd appreciate a like and subscribe, and again, any comments that you have, I'd love to read them. Thank you.